Hello, I'm Ted Pettis, and this is Karen Newell. We can follow the skeleton from the head down the vertebral column to the sacrum, which articulates with the hip bones to form the pelvic girdle. Historically, many anatomy students find these routes challenging to understand, often because they do not fully comprehend their relationship to the musculoskeletal structures of the region. In this communication, we demonstrate the musculoskeletal structure of the pelvis and perineum and emphasize features related to the course of vessels, nerves, and organs we will study later. As is often the case, we begin with the skeleton and some important ligaments. The hip bone is composed of three bones, the pubis, the ilium, and the ischium. They fuse together and completely ossify toward the end of puberty. The hip bones articulate with the sacrum to form the pelvic girdle. In this anterior view of the pelvic skeleton, we see the pubic bones joined at the pubic symphysis. Moving laterally, the first bump is the pubic tubercle. From there, move laterally along the superior pubic ramus. And here's the inferior pubic ramus, which stretches to the ischial tuberosity. The inferior pubic rami are sometimes called the ischio pubic rami. The left and right inferior pubic rami combine with the pubic symphysis to form the pubic arch. This is a male model where the angle is sharp. This is the female model Note the wider angle of the pubic arch on the female pelvis. That is no small difference. The obturator foramen is the large opening between the superior and inferior pubic rami. Posterior to that is the acetabulum, the socket that articulates with the head of the femur. The acetabulum is composed of all three components of the hip bone, the pubis, the ilium, and ischium. In this superior view, we see the ala, meaning the wings of the ilium, the iliac crest, the anterior superior iliac spine, and anterior inferior iliac spine. At the base of the ala, we see this crest that is called the pelvic brim. The pelvic brim is the border that surrounds the opening we call the pelvic inlet. The pelvic brim is the border between the greater and lesser pelvis. The greater pelvis is the larger superior area between the ala. The greater pelvis is continuous with the abdominal cavity and abdominal organs. Inferiorly, the lesser pelvis is where we find the true pelvic organs, such as the rectum, bladder, uterus, and prostate. Land. In the posterior view, we see the posterior superior iliac spine and the posterior inferior iliac spine. We also see the ischial spine and the ischial tuberosity. The greater sciatic notch is between the posterior inferior iliac spine and the ischial spine. The lesser sciatic notch is between the ischial spine and the ischial tuberosity. Take a moment to review these important structures. We will be building upon them in the next few moments. Note the sacrospinous ligament. The sacrospinous ligament runs from the sacrum to the ischial spine. Above the sacrospinous ligament, we see a foramen, the greater sciatic foramen. In other words, the ligament turned the notch into an important foramen that you need to know and identify. Inferiorly, we see the sacrotuberous ligament between the sacrum and the ischial tuberosity. Note the lesser sciatic notch is now the lesser sciatic foramen between the ligaments. When we study the course of nerves and arteries of the pelvis, these foramina will be very important. On your skeleton, identify the anchors for these ligaments and outline the greater and lesser sciatic foramen. We are looking at the inner surface of the left half of the pelvis. 
Notice the obturator foramen. With soft tissue in place, the obturator foramen is covered by a muscle, the obturator internus. The muscle attaches around the border of the foramen and covers the opening. See the obturator internus forming part of the lateral wall of the pelvis. Note that the tendon of the obturator internus exits through the lesser sciatic foramen between the sacrospinous and sacrotuberous ligaments. The obturator internus muscle is covered by a membranous fascia called the obturator fascia. Two specialized structures are formed by modifications of the obturator fascia. They are the pudendal canal, which is associated with the pudendal nerve and artery, and the tendinous arch of the levator ani muscle, which we will discuss next. The pelvic outlet is covered by the pelvic diaphragm, a structure composed of the levator ani and coccygeus muscles. It forms a complete barrier for passage out of the pelvis, thus keeping organs from falling down your leg. The pelvic diaphragm is shaped like a parachute that is attached around the lateral wall of the pelvis. It hangs like a bowl formed by soft tissue. It attaches along the pubis, the obturator fascia, and the ischial parts of the lateral pelvic wall. Let's move to a view of the hemipelvis to better appreciate the line of attachment for the pelvic diaphragm. In this hemipelvis, the diaphragm has been removed and there is a black line on the pelvic wall where it attaches. The levator ani muscle attaches along the pubis, obturator fascia, and ischium. Pay special attention to the attachment across the obturator fascia, or the fascial membrane covering the obturator internus. The obturator fascia thickens to form the attachment for the levator ani called the tendinous arch of the levator ani. It is also often called the arcuate tendon of the levator ani. The other component of the pelvic diaphragm, the coccygeus muscle, stretches from the ischial spine to the sacrum. Here. What other feature has those same attachments Nope. Anyone else? That's my pizza. Close. It's the sacrospinous ligament. The coccygeus is deep to the ligament and is part of the pelvic diaphragm. The pelvic diaphragm is the border between the pelvis and the perineum. Anything superior to the pelvic diaphragm is in the pelvis or the pelvic cavity. Anything below the pelvic diaphragm is in the perineum. In this inferior view, are we looking at the pelvis or perineum? Perineum. Yeah, we're looking at the perineum, a diamond-shaped region inferior to the pelvic diaphragm and bordered by the inferior pubic rami and a pair of lines running from the ischial tuberosities to the coccyx. Look at the lateral walls of the perineum. You see that part of the lateral wall is formed by the obturator foramen, which with muscles in place is the location of the obturator internus muscle. We're looking at the obturator internus inferior to the attachment of the pelvic diaphragm. Recall that the obturator internus muscle forms part of the lateral wall of the pelvis superior to the pelvic diaphragm as well. A line between the left and right ischial tuberosities divides the diamond-shaped perineum into two triangles, a posterior anal triangle and an anterior urogenital triangle. In the urogenital triangle, we find a second diaphragm, like membrane, stretching between the inferior pubic rami. This perineal membrane stretches between the inferior pubic rami. It is taut in contrast 
to the loosely hanging pelvic diaphragm. The perineal membrane forms a barrier in the urogenital triangle. The barrier divides the urogenital triangle into two compartments or pouches with specific names. The deep compartment, superior to the membrane, and the superficial perineal compartment, inferior to the membrane. Rotating the pelvis for a posterior view, we can see that the deep perineal compartment is between the perineal membrane and the levator ani muscle of the pelvic diaphragm. As you can see, the perineal membrane covers only the anterior half of the perineum, the urogenital triangle, where it obscures our view of the deeper pelvic diaphragm when seen from an anterior view. Posteriorly, in the anal triangle, we can see the pelvic diaphragm. And we can see once again that in the urogenital triangle, the perineal membrane divides it into a deep and superficial perineal pouch. All of this is inferior to the pelvic diaphragm and thus in the perineum, not the pelvis. These spatial compartments are important for describing the course of nerves and vessels and the locations of specific muscles and tissues in the pelvis and perineum.